Well, a couple of days ago, I was listening to an interview that Christian Amanpour did with a panel of experts on alternative intelligence. And she was asking them, what keeps you awake at night? You know, whether good or bad, what's keeping you awake about this technology? And uh, one of the experts said to her that this is nothing short of an intelligence revolution. And we've had the internet arrival, we've had the smartphone, um, and we had, that was the information revolution. And now we are looking at the intelligence revolution. It's a whole new level of, of change. And the woman said that this is a mega trend, not so much about technology, but about humanity. And she said, I want to um, disabuse people of this notion that AI is just going to take over our world. Um, she wanted to kind of to offer that as a comfort that we actually have agency and we decide whether AI will take over our world. And it brings me to this notion that Jesus came to bring good news. And his good news was that the kingdom of God is here. The kingdom of God has come and it is very near. And for a lot of people, you know, we read the Bible, all this weeping and gnashing of teeth, a lot of it doesn't sound like good news. And a lot of people can be afraid. You know, if you've ever ridden a subway in New York, you get a preacher on there, and they start talking about turn or burn. Um, these are not good news messages. Um, but Jesus was very clear about what the good news is. And when we do baptisms, as we did last Sunday, every time we, we re reaffirm our promise, to proclaim by word and example the capital G, capital N, good news of God in Christ. And it's, it's a challenge to actually define for yourself or for others what is the good news. And uh, we might have a phrase or, or an answer that we've been taught, or we might really have worked out what we, how we can tell others what the good news is. Um, but it's not exactly a succinct answer, and it's not the same words for every person, how to describe the good news. Some say Jesus came and died for my sins. That's good news. Some say it, it changed my life. Some say I now have a place to belong. Um, for Jesus, it was crystal clear. The good news is the kingdom of God, and the good news has come. And so we get all this teaching, and now here we are in the summertime, and we have our teaching gospel, and Jesus is our teacher. So welcome to summer school. Um, Jesus gives Kingdom of Heaven 101 today in Matthew 13. And in Kingdom of Heaven 101, it's a primer of what the Kingdom of Heaven is like. And he starts out, the Kingdom of Heaven, first of all, is nothing like they're expecting. It didn't come in with a bang. It's not some declared conquest of other kingdoms. The Kingdom of Heaven is like this. The Kingdom of Heaven is like a mustard seed. It's hidden, it's buried in the ground, but it's living, it's gonna grow and sprout. And this is a very imperfect illustration that Jesus uses because nobody in their right mind would have planted a mustard seed on purpose in their field because we, a mustard seed is a weed that would take over and sort of be a scourge in a garden. Um, and Jesus, though, came as one willing to be treated like a weed. And he is someone who gets plucked out and discarded. And he's willing to come in that manner because he knows that in fact what he brings will grow up into the greatest of all trees. And birds, you know, proverbially speaking, will build nests in its branches. The kingdom of heaven is a haven. It's a place to find peace and to, a place to find harmony ultimately. So he gives this mixed up kind of metaphor um, and it takes some engagement to really tease out this incredible message, what the kingdom of heaven is really like. It's a haven. Once you know what it is, you can build a nest in its branches and find shade. It's a beautiful image. And he goes on, the kingdom of heaven is like yeast. And if you've ever baked bread, you know that once you put the yeast in, you can't take it out. It's in there and it's permeated the whole, the whole batch of dough. Um, you know, in, in that time, they had something more like starter, you know, sourdough starter. We all know what that is, thanks to the pandemic. We all know what that is, thanks to the pandemic. Everyone was baking bread. Um, but starter, you know, it, it makes other starter. You can share your starter. It multiplies. It goes on and on. It's the gift that keeps giving. Um, and so the kingdom of heaven is like that. It's so um, permeating 
And Barbara Brown Taylor said, the earth is so thick with divine possibility. I sort of get that image when I think of all this bread rising. And three measures was a lot. That was not a loaf for your party. It was a loaf to fill, it was enough to fill an industrial kitchen. You know, and, and the idea is that the kingdom of heaven is for everyone, it's everywhere, it's enough for everyone to, to find nourishment. And it is at work, it's not waiting for some future time. Um, and then you have the, the kingdom of heaven is like a treasure hidden. Um, this is a paradox, you know, nobody likes a hidden treasure, you want to have the treasure. And, you know, unless you, if you're a pirate, you've got maps and you're looking for hidden treasure, it's vexing, you have to get your hands on it. Um, it's, not, it's, it's not gratifying that, you know, it's right out there for the taking and easy. This is not an easy thing, it's something to grapple with and pay attention to and search for. And it demands our response. You know, the, the treasure hidden, once somebody finds it, they go and buy the whole field. Um, they go all in. You know, I think the idea here is that it's, it's like an all or nothing response and that it invites our response. Kind of like this one, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. In this case, it's not the, the pearl itself. It, the kingdom of heaven is like the merchant that sells everything he has to buy this one pearl. And in doing that, he, he no longer can be a merchant. He's got no more merchandise. He has one pearl, and he's all over it. And uh, James Allison, who I, who I really admire so much, he's a theologian and teacher, talks about this parable as one that tells us that the kingdom of heaven is in search of us and will stop at nothing to possess us, nothing to take us in, and also places enormous value on us. And if we think of the, this in terms of the story of Jesus, um, you know, he went, to great, he went to every length to show us what God is like and to invite us into this kingdom. And he was put to death, you know, showing us what it looks like to live in the kingdom of heaven. And, and it invites our response to go all in. And the kingdom of heaven is like a net that goes and drags everything up off the bottom of the sea. In the Greek, this word is the dragnet. It's not a fishing net. They're not really just looking for fish. They're dredging or cleaning the pond or cleaning up the sea and bringing up everything. Um, and, and, and there's also really no mention of fish in the original text. That's just an added in by translators that they assume that, oh, it, they must have meant fish. But it, the words is all things. It dragged up all things. And um, if you want to stick to the food in the Galilean context for Jews, it would have been edible things, inedible things, and things that were edible but not allowed. You know, you can have all the stuff, though. And uh, they bring this net up to the shore and sit down and look at the, all that's in it. And Jesus says, in the end, at the end, another time, the angels will come and do the separating. It's really not our job to be separating out the evil from the good. And I think we miss that. That's where the gnashing of teeth and the bad news comes in and kingdom of heaven suddenly sounds like a terrible, dreadful, scary thing. And in fact, Jesus is always saying, it's for another time. And he's speaking to his disciples, he's speaking to people who in Matthew's time were already the church. And, you know, the church, sometimes we mistake the kingdom of heaven is the church, you know, come to, to nest in the world. But we are not the kingdom of heaven. We're here to point to the kingdom of heaven and to be like the kingdom of heaven. Be like the net that drags everything up and brings it all in and lets it be there together. And that's, in fact, what we are. We are all the things. We're the, the unwell, the well, the experts, the, the ne'er-do-wells, you know, the injured, the lame, and the weary. We are the world, and we are ones who have seen the treasure, and we want this treasure, and we, we know that God is for everyone. Um, so the kingdom of heaven has existed long before us and will exist without us, with us or without us. But the question is, do we want it to take over the world? Do we want this intelligence revolution of the heart to take over the world? And we have agency in it. We can be part of this kingdom of heaven, and in fact, we are. So we come to the quiz. Have you understood all this? <laughs> Jesus says to his disciples. And the Greek word in there, yes, is actually a sort of 
uh-huh. It's not quite a resounding yes, but it's like the kid in the back who's just like, yes, don't ask me to, to say it back to you. Um, but these disciples, they know Jesus wants them to know, and they, yes, they want to understand. They, they know that he's on to something, and they know that he is inviting them in to understand. And he says, all those who are training or trained to be, uh, to be part of the kingdom of heaven will be like the homeowner or the household master or the major domo who will go into their rich castle and be able to bring out what is old and what is new. And there's a great sort of maturity in that. And I think Jesus is saying that when we're trained up to, to see, when we're taught by Jesus about what the kingdom of heaven is and what it's like, we can see everything with new eyes and all of our old dusty tradition we've practiced for years there comes a time you see it anew, and it's what is old has become new. And all the images, the, the word treasure in this text is the word where we get thesaurus. You know, you can have new words for old things. You can have new words that mean the same other thing. And I love that idea that Jesus, the word, the word, we have all these words to describe Jesus and the good news. But in our thesaurus, in our treasure house of imagery and story and practice and liturgy and ritual and life experience, it all is to point us to this word, this broken in, this kingdom of heaven. So um, this is good news, and this is the good news of God in Jesus Christ, that the kingdom of God is here, and it is poised to take over the world, and we have agency to be a part of it. Let it be. Amen.